The world of war technology is changing. While the U.S. Navy is currently equipping its ships with futuristic high-tech lasers, South Korea is tinkering with a destruction machine armed to the teeth. But what makes these terrifying weapon systems so powerful? How will warfare change and evolve in the future? Stay tuned and join us to find out. The New Laser Weapon Last summer, naval warfare technology reached an unprecedented level. Defense contractor Lockheed Martin announced that Helios had been delivered to the U.S. Navy. This is a tactical laser weapon designed specifically for ships. Specifically, the 60-kilowatt laser weapon embodies the first to be fully integrated into the systems of a United States warship. Two years earlier, the USS Ponce had already been equipped with a laser, but it was only used for test purposes and did not come close to Helios' performance. The same applies to the component that was installed on the Odin in 2021. This is just as weaker than Helios and, moreover, only serves to confuse enemy drones. Just like the Odin, the USS Preble is an Arleigh Burke-class destroyer. Commissioned in 2002, the Preble brings it to a beam of 20 and a length of over 155 meters. In addition, the floating fortress is described by the Navy as the, quote, deadliest warship in the fleet. Helios was installed again as part of a year-and-a-half upgrade phase. But what makes this groundbreaking laser technology so special? What purpose does it serve, and what fields of application can it be used? Well, in general terms, we are dealing with an energy weapon or radiation weapon. Basically, the energy transfer of this new generation of weapon takes place through electromagnetic radiation, mostly through high-energy lasers or so-called masers. These are lasers in the microwave range. Although laser weapon technology appears to be fairly new, its roots go back to the early 1980s. A major driver for this field of research was the so-called Strategic Defense Initiative, which was launched by U.S. President Ronald Reagan during an extremely tense phase of the Cold War. Originally conceived to establish an effective defense shield against intercontinental ballistic missiles, the initiative was reduced to ground-based defenses under Bill Clinton and continues to this day. In addition to destroying and damaging military targets, laser weapons can also be used in non-lethal applications. For example, to restore mined land to use, or to bring space debris back into the atmosphere for re-entry, thus reducing the potential threat to space travel. Helios In the case of Helios on the USS Preble, the laser technology is explicitly not intended as an offensive weapon. Mounted just below the bridge, Helios has the primary mission of fending off kamikaze drones and boats. But why doesn't the U.S. Navy rely on classic defensive missiles in this regard? Well, this is because laser weapons are vastly superior to their conservative predecessors in a number of respects. First, there is the cost factor. Although the installation of a Helios system costs more than $60 million, a shot is significantly cheaper than a salvo with a failing anti-aircraft gun, a surface-to-air missile, or shells from the guns. Added to this is the fact that the ammunition is virtually unlimited, assuming sufficient fuel to run the power generators. Another advantage of Helios is its range, and by that, we don't primarily mean that Helios can lock onto targets over long distances, but that the system can be safely deployed over shorter distances without the risk of damaging your own ship. The bottom line, however, is that it is not even necessary for Helios to destroy a military target. In fact, the high-tech weapon is also capable of blinding the crew of approaching ships with reduced power. The latter would henceforth be forced to turn away without firing a single live shot. But the reverse approach has also been considered in the concepts. In the foreseeable future, Helios' power output is to be increased from 60 to 120 kilowatts in order to ward off large targets and destroy smaller ones even faster. Provided the laser weapon proves its worth in future tests, it is also to find its way onto other U.S. Navy ships. The higher goal is to develop a system so powerful that it can even take out anti-ship missiles. If the results of these trials are positive, Lockheed Martin stands to win additional production contracts worth a total of $660 million. Joint Firepower Ship However, 
The U.S. is not the only nation that is currently giving its fleet a major overhaul. In fact, South Korea is also currently pursuing a unique ship concept, the roots of which, however, lie dormant in the U.S. Navy. The so-called Joint Firepower ship is equipped with countless ballistic missiles. The idea for this floating destruction machine goes back to the Arsenal ship, an American warship loaded with missiles, which was never built. Basically, if you have a northern neighbor that likes to mess around with nuclear weapons and is led by a headstrong dictator, you would be well advised to upgrade your defenses. The South Korean government probably thought so too, which is why they commissioned the shipbuilder DSME to realize the joint firepower ship. Three models are to be launched by the end of this decade, and the main task of the ships is to reinforce the so-called kill chain. This is the South Korean sea area that is equipped with a network of sensors, spies, special units, and gunners in order to locate North Korean ruler Kim Jong-un if the worst comes to the worst and attack him and his nuclear weapons with all their might. To this end, the joint firepower ship carries up to 80 ballistic missiles, each equipped with conventional warheads. The kill chain also includes the Hyunmu 2A short-range ballistic missile and the Hyunmu 3 cruise missile. The Swedish-German Taurus cruise missile, launched by the F-15K fighters, is also an integral part of the chain. In this way, the missiles form a military triad of air, land, and sea-based precision weapons. Zumwalt class Originally, the Zumwalt class was to comprise more than 30 ships and form the new backbone of the U.S. Navy's destroyer fleet. However, with just one unit costing a whopping $4.4 billion, the original target number was continually reduced so that ultimately only three Zumwalt class units were approved. While the last member of the trio is still undergoing trials and the other two are already in service, the unusual design of the Zumwalt ships is no accident. In detail, the designers completely avoided creating surfaces that are at right angles to the water surface. As a result, the radar cross-section is also reduced, which means nothing other than the Zumwalt class embodies stealth ships that are very difficult to locate. If one follows the statements of the U.S. Navy, the Zumwalt appears on the enemy's radar screens to be about the size of an ordinary fishing boat. Equipped with their own landing pad for helicopters and equipped with a hangar, the ships each have four gas turbines. In terms of armament, the stealth ships rely on an 80-cell vertical launch system for missiles. The originally planned advanced gun system was cancelled for cost reasons. Instead, rail guns were fitted to the ships, which have a range up to 350 kilometers. Iron Beam To conclude today's video, we return from the water to land. To be more precise, we are going to Israel, to the so-called Iron Beam. This energy weapon-based air defense system was first unveiled in February 2014 and put into operation a good six years later by the Israeli defense company Rafael Advanced Defense Systems. The Iron Beam's main task is to knock out mortar shells, short-range rockets, combat threats, and artillery, all within a radius of up to 7 kilometers. To ensure that this is achieved, the air defense system uses a fiber laser, in other words, a glass laser that has optical wavelength properties. In this way, Iron Beam is able to take down an enemy target from the sky within 4 to 5 seconds. The corresponding threat is identified by a surveillance system. Just as in the case of the Helios on the USS Preble, Iron Beam is superior to conventional interceptor missiles. First and foremost, there are the operating costs. While a single fired interceptor missile can cost up to $150,000 a shot, with Iron Beam, cost just $2. Or to put it another way, one shot from the most effective energy weapons of our time is cheaper than a kebab. Moreover, since the operation of the Iron Beam requires less manpower, costs can be saved at this point as well. However, it is uncertain how the weapon's performance will turn out in detail. In this regard, those responsible stated the laser power to be a few dozen kilowatts. However, an upgrade to several hundred kilowatts is to be realized in the near future. Conceived during a five-year research and development phase, the Iron Beam consists of an air defense radar, a control and command unit, and two high-energy laser systems. 
In February of last year, Israel announced that the laser weapon system would be operational within 12 months. Subsequently, however, this time frame had to be revised upward somewhat. Currently, it is rather vaguely put at a single digit number of years. And with that, thank you for watching our video all the way to the end. Feel free to hit the like and subscribe buttons to support us for free and stay up to date at the same time. Before you take a look at the other videos in the credits, we'd like to ask your opinion. What goes through your mind when you see the futuristic laser weapon of the US Navy? How will the focus of warfare shift in the future? We look forward to your comments. And with that, we say ciao and see you next time.